I'm going to show you what a 100 watt solar panel can power. Can it run a TV, a pump, a laptop charger or even a fridge? I will explore its power production and show how long it can run. At the end, I will share a wiring diagram featuring a 100 watt solar panel. The power of a solar panel is expressed in watts, but that doesn't say anything about time. If we multiply the solar panel power by two sun hours, we get 200 watt hours. Watt hour is a unit of power over a specific time. With that being clarified, let's get to work on finding out how much energy a solar panel can produce. A fellow YouTuber, Alex, did a 10 day test on his 100 watt solar panel. He's based in Atlanta, Georgia, and the test was done in April. He ended up getting 4300 watt hours over a span of 10 days, which comes down to 430 watt hours per day on average. Now I will show you the power of an online tool, so you can do this for your location. The tool's name is PV Watts. You enter your location and the power of your solar panels. In this case, I want to compare it to the 100 watt solar panel test. So we enter the location of Atlanta and enter 0.1 for the system size. This is the same as 100 watts. Then we click next without changing anything. And we can see that the month of April is expected to deliver 14,000 watt hours in one month. Alex ran a test for 10 days. So if we divide by 3 to become 10 days, we become 4,666 watt hours. This is very close to the actual result Alex came up with, which was 4,300 watt hours. You can use this tool to figure out the average power production in your area. Have you used this tool before? And how does it match up with your installation? The solar power your panels collect varies with the season and where you are. This map provides average annual sun hours for different locations. For a precise estimate, I recommend the website mentioned earlier. Remember that sun hours differs from daylight hours. They specifically measure the intensity of the sunlight suitable for generating power. Always refer to sun hours to gauge your solar potential, not just daylight at your location. After this slide, we will explore what a 100 watt panel can power. But first, we have to talk about efficiency. A solar charge controller has an efficiency of 95%. A lithium battery has an efficiency of 97%. A DC to DC converter has an efficiency of 90%. And an inverter has an efficiency of 90%. Let's apply these efficiency figures to our previous example. We got a daily average of 466 watt hours. Now we apply the efficiency factors. 0.95 for the charge controller and 0.97 for the lithium battery. We get a result of 430 watt hours. Does this number sound familiar? That's the number Alex got with his test. Doesn't it feel great when the math works out? This is part 2 of the video where we figure out what the solar panel can power. A phone has a 12.5 watt hour battery. If we apply the efficiency factor of the charge controller, the lithium battery and the inverter, we will have a usable capacity of 368 watt hours. If we divide it by the battery capacity, we can charge the phone 30 times. Next, we want to see if a 100 watt solar panel can run a 100 watt fridge. We assume a duty cycle of 30%, so 8 hours a day. I made a video about my fridge power consumption, so I can say this is pretty accurate. We repeat the same calculations as before. We see that we can run the fridge for half a day. Let's calculate 8 5 watt LEDs. We can run these for 9 hours and 39 minutes. Let's try a 50 watt TV. We can run the TV for 7 hours and 43 minutes. I think you're getting the point. You can repeat these calculations for your own devices. After this slide, I will share the diagram with you to make it more visual. 
Let's say you have a van and a 100 watt solar panel. What can you power? We already know that the solar panel, including the efficiency losses, can make 386 watt hours on an average day. We will power a phone charger, two 5 watt LEDs that will be on for 4 hours, and a 35 watt laptop charger for 4 hours. If we total these numbers, we get 192 watt hours of daily energy usage. 192 watt hours of daily consumption with 3 days of autonomy requires a 576 watt hour battery. Times an efficiency loss of the charge controller and lithium battery, we become 625 watt hours. Now we divide by the battery nominal voltage of 12.8 volts to become 48 amp hours at 12 volts. So one 12 volt 50 amp hour battery is sufficient. Next, we find out the average sun hours for Atlanta during April, which is 6 hours. To recharge 625 watt hours daily, we need 104 watts of solar panels. That was a lot of formulas in one slide. I hope you're still with me. What do you think about the amount of devices we can power with a single 100 watt solar panel? Is it less or more than you expected? Let me show you the diagram next. We can wire the solar panels straight into the charge controller, without a fuse. From there, the wires go to the battery. F1 is a 20 amp MIDI fuse, and a 12 gauge or 4 mm square wire. Then, there will be wires going to the 600 watt inverter. We need a 70 amp MIDI fuse, and a 6 gauge or 16 mm square wire. The DC fuse box will connect to the load output of the charge controller. We don't need a fuse here, because it's already protected by one. The maximum power this output can deliver is 15 amps. So 15 amps times 12 volts equals 180 watts. If your load is larger, wire directly from the battery terminals with a fuse. We can use a 14 gauge or 2.5 mm square wire. Let's calculate the price for this system. A 100 watt solar panel will cost you $90. A 12 volt 50 amp hour battery $125. A 10 amp charge controller from Victron will cost you $45. A DC fuse box $15. 6 feet of solar cables $15. Wiring $50. Fuses $50. And lastly the inverter $110. The total cost of this system is $500. I have listed all the components in the description below. I hope you learned something today. If you did, consider liking the video. It helps me spread the message. Subscribe for more videos like this, and I will see you in the next one.